I don't know about that. That's so close. That works. Yes. Um, so it's gonna be a quick get ready with me. Literally, what I do every day when I get ready. I shower. My hair needs to air dry. Um, and then I blow dry it because I find that if you try and blow dry it, just a side tip, no. If you have curly hair, if you try and blow dry it right after the shower, wow. So I tried to cut my hair, side note. Whatever, it's not even anymore. It's okay, curly hair, you can't tell. Um, so I try, if you try and blow dry it, it'll get frizzy. If you air dry it, minimize the frizz. Alright, so first. Oh, side note, um, I'm in Marseille, which is the south of France. I'm here for a week. What I usually do first is we're gonna tone with rose water. Mario Badescu. Um, I don't know if it really does anything. It just smells like the bomb.com. It feels just. Okay. <clears throat> oh, in my mouth. So then, what I usually put on my face. I need like a better face cream, but I just work, I just use what I know works and doesn't break me out. Um, and I use cocoa butter. The Palmers, it's probably not good for your face. Let's get it, let's get it. Um, where have I been? I've been literally dealing with some of the lowest of lows and the highest of highs in my life and i feel like that's not an excuse to not be pursuing so okay no for real like this is act oh i usually just moisturize but i've just been dealing with a lot i started this youtube channel because i was diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety and i thought Oh, I'm going to use it as my form of connecting with the world when... I'm just going to put it all over my arms. Um, connecting with the world through my experience of growing through this and creating a resource that I couldn't find. Because I felt weird. Like, I was like, am I the only one? Like, am I weird? Am I crazy? Like, am I the only one who goes through this? Well, at least in my generation, like it's not talked about now. It's becoming more like a thing, but it was so taboo. Even in my household, it was taboo. So I started that, but then a lot happened, and sometimes you just gotta take care of yourself. And so I just went really hard, took care of myself, was in school, made sure I finished school, because it affected a lot. It affected my schoolwork. It affected my attendance. It affected my health. That's a whole other story, but yeah, so I got through it, I graduated, but I'm so proud of myself. Like, I did that, and I did that under some ridiculous circumstances, so anyways, that's that. So I did that, and then I was going through remission, and it was great, and then you get your little bumps in the road, and it's okay, and you realize that you're going through them because you've been working at it therefore you can get through it i don't know rambles 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 and i think people can relate to that like it's not something that you cure it's not something that it's a daily thing you know and it's hard if you don't go through it to understand like this whole idea of not being grateful and oh you have everything going on you're good or you look good on instagram or your life looks fine and you have nothing to be upset about it's so far from that um but yeah anyways uh i used the nars creamy concealer in the color ginger and this so anyways i do this i feel like i'm gonna sneeze um, and the more that I've accepted that aspect of me, quote unquote flaw or challenge, the more I realize like it's not who I am, it's just part of my experiences, that's all. Um, Real Technique Beauty Blender, I know this looks dirty, but I swear I wash it. I've been having really bad anxiety. And I tend to have anxiety before I fly because I feel like, oh, I'm going to be in a space where 
I don't necessarily feel 100% secure and my routine is off and I feel like people who do go through anxiety, they latch on to comfort to reassure themselves and this has really just been like an experience um, to challenge that and I think it's good. You need to feel uncomfortable to grow and I feel like, oh my gosh, like if I could tell you how much I've grown like, ah, like, just, ah, it's crazy and how much I've shed and I really feel like that's what I'm going through right now. I'm shedding, like, literally, metamorphosis. Um, it's just sucky that you have to bring your demons with you in such a beautiful place, but I feel like, I think that just shows that you can be in the most beautiful place in the whole world. doesn't mean that. I don't know, it's all in your head. Like, on to other things. <laughs> That's my whole little ramble about mental health. And I think it's something I want to be more candid about because the more I felt that I connected with people who could understand me or didn't necessarily em empathize, but sympathize at least, not feeling sorry, but could just be like, yo, I get it. We all have our demons. We all go through our things. The more I felt I connected to people, the less... I don't know what the word would be. I don't want to say alone, I felt, but the more alive. I very secluded from the world for a really long time. Like, I felt like I was going through motions, but no one really got me. Yeah, no one got me. Um, and I love the people that have come in and out of my life. They've all had their purpose, but I feel like very few have understood really like me, every side of me. Um, and it's not their fault. But unfortunately, that played a big role in a lot of friendships that I lost, relationships that I lost. And I could see the pain it caused on my family members because it was like, yo, they don't get it, but they tried to. Like, and that's all I really asked. But it hurt them. It hurt people I loved because I didn't get it. So by understanding that, not everyone has to understand, but as long as they are patient with you, I think that's all that matters. So connecting with others was empowering. I think that's the word. It was empowering. Eyebrows. I always do. I usually do eyebrows first. I don't know why I did concealer first, but. So I just brush it. I don't ever use the Anastasia, like actual brow, like brow part. I just use the, the wand. And I haven't done my eyebrows in, let's say about six months. So they're just bushy AF and I ain't mad about it. Be raw. Like I feel like that's why I wanted to do this. This whole experience, YouTube and social media, because it's like everyone runs to it to show off how great their life is going, but no one's really showing what, like, like the actual thing, like what people are going through. It's like here I am in the south of France and I'm going through anxiety and it's like, it's okay. And you can do it, like you can get through it. You can have the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the growth, everything. And I think that's so yeah eyebrows i've been doing my eyebrows the same since well i never did my eyebrows in high school that's a dark time um but i've just been using the same eyebrow palette it's literally a maybelline quad hitting pan and it's like the dark like matte brown and i just take a little angled brush and i just i just give it a little bit of a shape where there's I just fill it in, basically, but not too dark. The goal of my makeup is to make it seem like you're not wearing makeup. As I've said, I've experienced, um, been able to travel the world, been able to meet like-minded people, and my purpose has gotten a lot stronger. My passion has continued to, what you do is you literally take this or you wipe it off. What I do is I usually go like this to get rid of some of it and then I just brush it. So today I'm probably gonna go explore the city and try and shop, do some retail therapy because God knows I deserve it right now. Currently applying for my master's, um, applying for internships, I still work, work with kitties. Any of my kitties are watching this, I love you. Um, I work with kids 
and I realized that a lot of my passion is drawn into helping people, but specifically molding minds. Um, I feel like we're all hurt children and we are trying to be adults. And I think that's when a lot of our issues start is in childhood. So, or even our youth or adolescence. So it's like, if you can have someone who can help you through that or help nurture you through those times, not nurture you, but you know, just establish a good foundation. I think it could change a lot of things. Let's do a little bit of blush. The blush I like to use <laughs> is the Wet n Wild color icon. In the color, I think it's like... Oh, it's really cute though. Oh, oh, pearlescent pink. My face is naturally really blushy. I just like to add it. Make sure my fat cheeks look even fatter. And it has a bit of gl glitter in it, so it's don't really need highlighter. I like highlighter, but I don't like glitter. Like, it's a deep. Like, do I even want that? I'm feeling the blush. Yes. Okay, so I actually need a new um, lip liner because I don't know if I love this one on my lips, but it's going to have to do for now. So I line my lips and I go like this, and I know it looks crazy. I look crazy. Slash is my favorite part, but it also takes the longest for me. And I use two at minimum. L'Oreal mascaras are my favorite. The L'Oreal Voluminous Original Don't Get Waterproof. And the Lash Paradise, the Voluminous Lash Paradise. Both of these together is just a deadly combo. Yeah. And another one is I really want to explore my Bedouin roots. So for those of you that don't know, I am a half Moroccan. I haven't looked at myself in this, and I know the faces I'm probably making are so attractive right now. Um, yeah, so I have bedroom roots from the Bear Bear side of my family in Morocco, which is like the native, the natives of the land before the col colonializers came, because Morocco definitely is on the coast closest to Europe and is the closest exit for most of the African countries to go to Europe. So the amount of colonialization and mixtures and just, yeah, it's just crazy. So on one hand, I know that I'm Moroccan, but I don't know with, there's just so much mixture, you know? And I think that's why I look so ambiguous not 100 percent that but i know that my grandfather is from a bedouin tribe his mom was from the bedouin tribe she had like the tats and everything on her face and i'm just so fascinated i feel like even spiritually we are our ancestors we are our bloodlines like coded like our genetic coding our spiritual coding our habits our patterns everything like it's just so interesting interesting i want to learn about it especially the women like they were their experiences were a lot different than yo mascara is a game changer don't sleep Ooh. Okay, so then my last step that i always do with when i feel like getting fancy when i feel like getting fancy um is i will take a highlighter and Honestly, my favorite highlighter for this is a Wet n Wild highlighter, which is like four bucks. Um, they sell them at Rexall and Walmart. It's that precious petal. And it's just know who put you on. And I put it in the tear duct area because I don't like um, eyeshadow. Like I'm not. This is the closest you'll get to eyeshadow with me. My last step is my gloss. I've been loving the Buxom glosses. My girl Lindsay put me on. Shout out to Lindsay. She's so fire. And I'm basically done. My hair is almost dry. So I'll wait and then I'm going to blow dry it. And I, oh, I don't know why. This is so good. It's so good. Why is it going to be so expensive? 
So that was my get ready with me. My hair is gonna dry. I'll probably blow dry it, and then yeah, I'm gonna do more videos. If you like these types of videos? Let me know. If not, if they're boring to you, you keep your opinion to yourself. <laughs> I'm playing. It's okay. Freedom of speech. Um, I'm just happy to be back. And thanks for still watching me. You're a real one. I'll see you next time.